Governor Leon Guerrero has not reviewed the bill in its entirety. However, in principle, she believes in second chances and the ability of reentry for those making the full effort to turn their lives around. I mean, and I can understand if, like, you know, the <laughs> um, <laughs> you were done with your probation or whatever. But I mean, the guy, they, they, the ink on his plea agreement didn't even dry. So when you talk about repaying your debt to society, like they, the guy went from straight probation over to the poor. It's ridiculous, really. It really is. And it, to me, it's an insult to the people at the port because not only did he get the job carrying this freaking black stain on his record, not only did he get the job, but he was the top rated applicant. The top rated applicant. I mean, can you imagine if Joe serve, you put in your application down there and you're like, Hey, who applied? And they're like, Oh, uh, Lieutenant governor's now applied. You're like, Oh, I don't got to worry, man. He was in the freaking, he got convicted of official misconduct. Then lo and behold, you find out that he was the top one. I mean, it's crazy. It is. Um, but again, like I said, what you're going to see with this public hearing and when this hits the floor is you're going to see those senators down there who were in anti Lou's pocket, Talk about, this is their spin. It's about second chances. Bro, I have relatives who have done time. They don't even get a first chance. And this is clearly a who you know type of situation. It is. It is, which is okay. I get it, right? That's GovGuan politics. But again, I, I think if we remove uh, Mr. Rosalind from this conversation and just look at the facts, I don't think that you could really argue against that we need to be a little, I mean, we just got to have a higher standard guys. Is it so wrong? Let's pick the standard up from out of the mud and lift it up a little bit. All right. Because there's people who can get second chances, but I'm just saying official misconduct means that you can't be trusted to work for the people of Guam. That's what it means. So why should we give second chances to people who already blew it? when they were trusted by us to protect us or to serve us. It's just so basic to me. Anyway, it's 907. I'm just saying, Bree, I see all the orchestration behind this and I just got to call it out. So there you go. Yes, we're I, ready. I just don't know why you're surprised. I'm it's not. Just, or... Because it's just one thing after another. You know what I mean? I hear you. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into the Zoom room where uh, Senator Selena Nelson. I guess I just have more restraint. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I just, you know, you know me. You can read it on my face. It's not really good at, like, hiding. That's why I don't play poker. All, all I give is, like, the eye roll. Yeah, that's, uh, but, you know, Sabrina's <laughs> eye roll is, like, equal to me, my 10 minutes of... <laughs> We're different. That's, uh, okay, 908. I just want to give you a little room, Senator, because I don't want to bring you in in this controversial topic right off the bat. So we'll just give it a five, four, three, two. <sighs> Okay, moving on. Uh, 908, let's bring uh, the Port Oversight Chair. She's also the Education Oversight Chair, uh, Senator Talina Nelson, on to the link. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good morning, Bree. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Are you done ranting, Chris? Uh, I could go on, but you know, I'm all right, all right. But you know what, Senator? I just want to say, like, it's wrong of me to call it a rant because I don't believe it's a rant. It's been turned into a rant because of where the, the lines have been drawn on this simple, it's a simple bill to me. Anyway. How are you doing? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. I don't even know where to start, Senator. That Because we're still thinking about that first oversight hearing and just what a like, holy moly it was. Um, but then there was also that audit that came out from the public auditor uh, regarding the port uh, settlement. And there was something about $118,000 overpayment. And we didn't hear. Yes. Uh, so do you want to start there and kind of did you have a comment on that or? Yes, and, and I, I thought it was um, interesting that the GM of the port um, asked the AG to opine on the issue of the OPA's findings. And so I spoke with the OPA and I I think that, you know, it's it seems like it's a he said, she said, and however you want to interpret it, then you interpret it that way. If it could benefit you, then you interpret it in the way you want to, you want it to benefit you or if it can harm 
someone or, you know, if you can bring light into things and you interpret it as such. And so um, I, when we received the OPA report, I read it really quickly and um, I spoke with the OPA and there were some concerns and it is very concerning in, in some of the issues that were brought up um, as far as the increments and um, the back pay and the benefits, uh, you know, it, it seemed like you just have to write, um, get concurrence of the board. And that doesn't seem difficult to do if you did it, if you, the process was done correctly. Um, so I, I, I wrote to the GM and I told him to anticipate that we're going to have a hearing uh, to discuss the OPA report. And then several days later, I saw that there was a letter written to the AG and asking him to opine on the matter that the OPA is stating that they did not follow the process. And so I, I want to see what the AG has to say to, you know, to see uh, really, because um, there's, there's different levels of concern that the OPA brought up. And so I want to see if the AG is going to say, oh, there's nothing wrong with this or yes, there's an issue with this and the law needs to be addressed. And so if that's the case, then, you know, we are waiting and, and ready to go in and address those laws and to ensure that it doesn't happen again. And there's also another, um, we're also, I understand that the OPA is also doing some other audits on the port. And so I want to see what these audits are about and if it's consistent or if it has any or if they're completely different topics and situations and circumstance. All right. Um, what, what was the response to your letter, though, to uh, the general manager? I I think they just acknowledged the receipt. <laughs> they didn't give you 37 pages of, like, this is why we hate you. <laughs> and a video. And a video. <laughs> Man, Senator, I want to go back to that first oversight hearing because I've, I've sure. never seen... And I mean, you know, it's not like I watch, I've seen a lot of oversight hearings, but just that the tone with the GM of the port and especially when he was challenging you as the oversight chair, um, when you had said, I think you sent a FOIA and you said, hey, I want to know everybody hired with a criminal record. And then he had came back with, um, oh, well, if you want to know, then why don't you name names? And he just kept on. Uh, yeah, and I, but he, he did uh, give uh, uh, names of individuals with a criminal record. It was just from... The previous administration. Right, right, right. It yeah. wasn't from. It was the administration of uh, current Senator um, Joanne Brown's time at the port. Um, so it was rather incomplete. But just with the tone of that, uh, Senator, I wasn't sure when the hearing was resolved, if mm -hmm. you were planning to continue it or if you were satisfied or you, or you kind of um, uh, maybe just looking at what was said and figuring things out from there. Right. And so, you know, uh, the GM, you know, he stated that he's been in this position as a senator for 14 years and, and I respect that and I get it. Um, and so it should be understandable that when we call for an oversight hearing, when there's a community concern, that it's okay to, to provide the information requested or to be transparent um, in, in, in all matters, right? If you feel like you have done nothing wrong. And so, and I've, and I've dealt with, you know, in my short time as a Senator, I've dealt with these type of situations where the directors or the GMs are, are displeased with, with oversights. And I've actually had someone walk out. And so, um, but, you know, I work for the people of Guam. There's a community concern about the hiring process. Um, that occurred at the port. And so let's just get down to it. If there is if there is nothing that prohibits you from doing it in the law, if you've done everything in accordance with the your personal rules and regulation, then let's discuss that. Let's discuss how, you know, some areas that we can improve upon because, um, because it's just that. I mean, I understand that, you know, there was concern. However, we did receive um, a file. And so we went to the CSC and we asked the CSC, you know, to just to show that we're not, we're, we're trying to show if there's any consistency with this type of practice, right? If, if this occurred in a previous administration and if it's occurring now, um, you know, 
if we see this and, and, and see what laws that they use to defend that practice, then we can address that specific section. And that was the reason why I asked for a previous administration um, for those years in the previous administration and current. So we can look at the laws and the rules and regulations that address that section and see where we can improve it. Um, so I had to write the CSC for an update because we received um, documentation that shows that one of the concerns that were brought up in the community dated uh, the hiring was in fiscal year 2021. And so I'm going back to the CSC, I believe March 2nd, to explain that we also need to look at fiscal year 2021. I asked them if they could just add it into their the current request that I had, but they said that we it's, they're going to handle it as a completely separate case. Mm. And so um, I'm hoping that the CSC will take the case and we can move forward from there. The the challenge here is is really are we hiring on merit? And that's the question. And we received some of the applications and resumes of the people for the a certain position and those applications it seems that they, there was at least 10 people qualified for the job or had greater responsibilities within that job that they were applying for and so um maybe we need to look at the government's merit system and how do we fix the merit system and make sure that the people that are qualified for the job do you have an opportunity to get the job? I'm still trying to work my head around that. I'm researching other states, other countries to see how we can improve, but not many people, not many states have this issue because mm -hmm. Guam, you know, that we have, uh, there's things we cannot control. We cannot control who we're related to and we cannot control the influences of the people we're related to. And then if you don't listen to the people that you are related to, then then you're being uh, res disrespectful, you know? Yeah. They say Tati respect you, right? <laughs> so tough, you know, these one. are some of the challenges we're facing because of because of our dynamic. We can't yeah. control that. Yeah. And, and so I, I think anytime we when, can fix it, we can fix right. the process. When you involve family center, I mean I'm guilty of it too. We're all we're all biased to our family, and that's why it's important to maintain the standards <laughs> when family enters the picture, you know what I mean? Yes, and um that's very important to me too. Um Many times I have, I have done a lot of things that my family do not, my family does not agree on, but I believe in my heart that I was put here by the people and I'm supposed to do my job. And so I, you know, and many times I try to explain that and that I hope they respect that. And if they don't, then I'm sorry, I, you know, I cannot control what you do, but I'm going to do my best to do my job for the people. So you basically say, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Brain? What what uh, what position uh, were you talking about? You said where there were ten applicants. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but it's it's the position that uh, that Frankie Roslin applied for. Oh wow! So I I believe it's a program coordinator yeah. okay. position, but I want to get it specific because we even have the uh, job description requirements, like you know the KSAs, the knowledge, skills, and abilities for it. So you're so, saying that that 10 other people other than uh, Mr. Roslin applied or nine other people? No, there are a lot of people that applied for that job. Oh, wow. More than 10? Yes. There's a, you know, uh, yes, there's a lot of people. And so we, we went through it and we have a listing and there's probably like five very good candidates that um, have experience, that have degrees, um, I think even one had their master's, but I have to verify. What? And so we want to, yeah, so we, you know, if it's something that we need to look at as far as like a merit system, how do we improve this process, then let's do so. Wow. So basically everything we've been saying is true, is that there was a lot of people who were probably more qualified for this job, but somehow Mr. Rosalind was the top ranked candidate. Now, Senator, I know, I don't know if you have an HR background, but just looking at the list, I mean, just offhand, making a, an assessment on your part, would you agree that Mr. Rosalind was the best candidate for the job? All right, let me rephrase that. Well, you I don't really put me on a spot I, No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, but it's not really a spot. And that's what I said when I, when I was talking before we brought you on is that 
it's not our fault that, the, that he is who he is. It's not our fault. They put him in this position and they drew attention to it. And so it's, I mean, did he appear, I guess. Um, and it's well, so bad, it's that... Senator, I just got to say, it's so bad that a sitting senator doesn't even want to say if she thinks the guy was qualified. That's how bad it is. That's no, how, that's, that's how no, tough this it, environment it's, it's is. It's just because things get spun, you know, and things get misinterpreted. Right. And so, you know, there was a vetting process. And if, you know, people will say, what, you don't agree with my vetting process, mm. you know, and then now I'm the bad guy again. You don't work at the port. You've never yeah. worked at the port. So how can you say our vetting process is wrong? We're doing everything yeah. within the personnel reg rules and regulations. They were vetted by a panel and it was sent to me and this was recommended. And so the process was put in place, right? right? And so now we're looking at, um, is there a way that we can improve this process? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, it's not that, you know, I, I just want to make sure that people don't spin it to make it seem like we're going after an individual yeah, or going after an agency. That's not the case here. I know. Senator, the case is, is how do we improve this process? I think people see through that though. And, and what Senator is referencing, and we've all seen it, was when she started to kind of go hard on the port, they started attacking her and they started saying, oh, Senator Nelson thinks everybody at the port is on drugs. Like the GM actually let those words come out of his mouth. How irresponsible is that? It's so irresponsible, Senator. And I, that's why I have a problem with, uh, I guess, you reacting to that. Like, that's why they did it. They, they said that. They said that you're attacking the employees. So the next time you come out and you get asked a question, it's in your head that, oh, God, if I say something, they're going to say I'm attacking. We know you're not attacking the employees. GM Roy Respicio, he knows it, too. They all know it. You're just doing your job. Yes, I'm just doing my job. All right. So you you don't think he was the most qualified, in other words? Or it appears that there were might have been candidates who had education and maybe more qualifications. But let me ask you this, right? Candidates. Um, because yeah. that's how they're holding us up as they're saying, oh, it went through the merit system process. Do you believe that it's possible for an agency uh, to influence the merit system? Pro I mean, how hard would it be for the, I mean, the when we talked about it, I feel like if there is a panel and they see this name, they know who it's connected with. You might not even need to tell them. They might just say, oh, okay, that's Rory. It's a, good. Put him on the top. So that's why I'm not really confident that when we say, oh, it went through the merit system, that the merit system is not i mean above like influencer i think they can finagle it i think that's the challenge that we deal with living in guam um and you see it not just in the port you you see it also in our public safety agencies you see it you see it in other, in other agencies you know because um it's difficult in guam there's the connections are so close they're so intertwined and there's the rules and regulations are so old. And so this is something we need to address. We need to evolve our personal rules and regulations. And so we can give everyone uh, a fair chance based on merit. I mean, this was the whole purpose for the French Revolution is because, you know, those that had the power were, were placing, you know, other people in positions. And it wasn't a meritocracy. So let's improve this. Let's see how we can make it a meritocracy for jobs that are open in the government, especially now because our unemployment rate is so high. Right. Good point there, Senator. Wait, wait, I, re I really like how you're trying to stay above all the fray and the noise. Yes, I, want to, I want to state facts. I don't want to, you know, create, uh, you know, my feelings or someone else's, right. someone else getting emotional and stuff like that. It's not about that. Yeah. So when you look at this the facts- This is a process flaw, let's fix the process. Yeah. That's good. Really? I'm just saying, if you look okay, at the thank facts, you. I have to go to a public hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. No, so, so what is your position on the official misconduct bill? <clears throat> well, um, you know, I so. You know, Chris was saying, you know, giving people a second chance is, is something good and stuff like that. But yeah, if um, if you were working in the government and and you you've um, 
you're, I think it's, if it matter, if you're on probation and you haven't served your time and you haven't completed it, then that's something that needs to be reconsidered to let you back into the government. Um, I think you need to finish your time to include your probation. And then, you know, then the government, you know, has the authority to hire. But on, an, on another side, I think also that, um, that we, we ask businesses to employ people as well, right? We, so we're going through this process of saying, you know, um, last term we passed the, uh, I think it was the Fair Chances Act. Gosh, mm -hmm. I, so it, was, it was Senator Torres's bill, right? Mm -hmm. To ensure that, you know, people had a fair opportunity to apply for a job and to receive a job. And so if the government is placing this burden just on the private businesses, um, the government should also be willing to accept, share the burden as well. And so I think this is something that we need to discuss. I mean, I think there are positions in the government where people can be placed with, you know, with the mistakes that we've made in our past. Um, and there are some positions where you just can't be placed. And so if you're doing one thing and put in a position that is also vulnerable to the same thing that was performed, then there's an issue there. So like if you were caught for embezzling funds and then you're a cashier, you know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to put them in that same position. So you haven't okay. decided. <laughs> well, we have to discuss it public, right. you know, right. I mean, right. I don't have all the answers and I need to look at the law and I have to, you know, see what other, what other um, dialogue was happening in the past and dialogue happening across the world. I, I need to get different perspectives to really discern on this, this situation. But I mean, yeah, it's well, how, how do we meet this? How do we balance it, you know, mm -hmm. to ensure that those that are hired in the government are protecting the interests mm -hmm. of the people that serve, they serve. Right. And um, so, yeah. I also wanted to ask you because you did have an, I think it was an oversight hearing with the Port Authority, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Yeah. I, not I, a port, no, I'm sorry, not Port. I'm sorry, Customs. Customs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we did have uh, Mr. Pareto on. Oh, boy, we were, did we. We were talking about uh, inspections and mm -hmm. how they're putting a majority of their drug their their priorities priorities dogs dogs yeah, at the post over office. At the post office. Yeah. And he couldn't Correct. tell us um, how many inspections were actually conducted at the Port Authority. Did he let the, the committee know how often they had been to the port? to do inspections because those are the most reliable way uh, right to and so drugs. it is not clear it is it has not been very clear and so um i am meeting with the chief of customs i think it's this week or next week to really get into the weeds of what he was trying to to say um you know that they're 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 applauding um customs and quarantine for the job that they're doing at the post office but very little discussion is being focused on our other port of entry, yeah. which is at the port yeah. and so, um, and the airport. And so there were no flights coming in the airport during COVID. So, and there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of containers coming in. There was a lot of shipments coming in through the port during COVID. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, they, they're, they increased their revenue, I think by 4.1 million to, to some kind of extent. So. Right what happened during this time? Where, where were your people prioritized? Was it prioritized where, where there was um, uh, uh, an influx of containers or, or have you even done that? Do you have the resources to do that? And that's interesting because he doesn't say that he needs resources to yeah. do these functions. And so I think I need to sit down with him and just really understand where he's coming from and uh, to, to fix it, you know, to, to see if, if it's the resources that he lacks or um, I'm not getting any concrete information. Right. And so that's, that's, that's not, I am kind of troubling. I don't think right? that, that is satisfying. Yes. It's, it's concerning Sen to me. Very yeah. concerning. Senator, I felt like when we asked him that question, it was like a really simple question. And I feel like mm -hmm. if I was the customs director and I'm not trying to be the customs director, God in hell no, but I would be like, oh, that's easy. We do an inspection every week. We go here, we do that, we do that. But I mean, he couldn't even say when the last inspection was. 
So that was just like, yeah. So I, I can send it. I'll send it to, to you. But yeah, we said we said hey. So they had uh, some kind of joint thing the week we interviewed him. He said yeah, this week we had one. And then we said how about before that? And he was like uh. He said we have to get a request from the supervisor and. So yeah, to when was the last that, time? Yeah. When was the last time you know you got that request? But yeah, again, he he couldn't say. But just in your opinion, because uh, you've been in, had oversight over um, customers, right? Last last term, right? No, the previous. Well, you, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You were public public safety. Yeah. But yes. our vice vice chair of public safety. Do you believe that drugs are coming in through the port? <sighs> I believe that the containers are not being inspected as well as they should be. And I and from statistics, we see that um, the drugs that are being, um, I guess, found for lack of a better word, right, or discovered or or intercepted is, is at the post office, and so. Um, I don't know why for so long we're washing our hands. It seems that they're washing their hands and saying, um, there's nothing coming in through the port. Well, the reason why there's nothing coming or they don't have any data or statistics for the port because we're not inspecting the port. And so I think we need to improve that. I think we need to take a look and provide the resources they need to improve it now they might come back with oh you need to give us 150 personnel if you want us to inspect the port and i just think that that is um, an egregious request i think that there's a process that we can improve and if you really want to prioritize inspecting the port then you would put that effort to inspect the port be mindful that our post office our mail usually goes through hawaii right and so it's 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 vetted twice over and it's kind of like they anticipate that they know they're going to find something when it reaches Guam. Mm. And so why don't we put that same emphasis at the port? Right. Well, the and so I, I'm going on a walkthrough, um, I think within the next week or so with Customs and Quarantine and the port uh, GM Ooh. to understand the, the uh, flow through process from when the ship ports to the containers moving off of the port and to see each role in act in action as we move the cargo throughout um, the port and into the public. And so I think that would give me a better understanding of where some of the gaps will be and we will work to fill those gaps. What, what time is that? I have to check. It's sometime next week or the week after. You better wear your Kevlar. Maybe we could, uh, well, I mean, if, if Rory's cool with it, if we could come down and shoot video and, and uh, do a story on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> She's like, get, her, get real. No, but Senator. No, no, you, no, you, you have to, yeah, you have you to ask. Yeah. Right. You know, awesome. it's been very, tor very territorial, even in the previous years, right? right. Yeah. Um, even in the previous administration, it was very difficult for, the port's concern is they want to make sure that the community, this is from when I was the oversight chair, that they wanted to make sure that there was no um, stoppage in getting goods out to the yeah. community. And so it was, it seemed like it was a battle for customs and quarantine to perform their duty at the port. But now the GM is very open and, and welcoming to customs and quarantine. Please come down. There's something you need to do come down. So he's been very, you know, open to that. So you, you got to give him that much. Yeah, we, we did yeah. a whole Facebook Live. Chris, you went down there. Um, and yeah, for Port thing. Week. Yeah. yeah. Now they're mad at me, though, but it was cool back then. Okay, thank you, guys. I have to go. Yes, yes, okay, thanks. Yeah. Th right. th thank thanks, you, Senator. Senator, Senator thank come you. back anytime. Let's come back anytime. We love having you on. There you go, Senator Talina Nelson.